It's the 1st of December, which means it's the first day of our Winter Power Challenge, and as you can see, it's a beautiful day. We are now really having to economise on power. We're just not getting the PV today, so I'm worried about today. We're bringing in over 2,000 watts. The percentage of charge is going up, and if it carries on like that, maybe, just maybe, we will get through today. Okay, so we're hitting a few problems. A major thing we've had lately is keeping our batteries warm again. I really never got onto it in the summer about putting Kingspan insulation around like we were going to. The reason for that was it was about £200 to put the insulation around them and I didn't like the idea of it and obviously it's costing us now. We've had a bit of a disaster of a night considering it was beautiful sunshine yesterday and the panels were bringing in was it over 3,000? Around 3,000. Around 3,000 watts at, at yes, some yeah. points. We managed to charge up to 55%, woken up this morning, and we were at... We've gone down to 16%. Well, we're 16% we? now. Yeah. yeah. So, really bad news. It's crazy when you think that we scrapped through the first week because it was really cloudy, and we were losing 10% overnight, but managing to claw that back during the day. And then we've had a beautiful sunny day yesterday, and now we've lost over 20, 30% just... Yeah just because it was cold yeah. and this the cold snap I know it's going to be hurting people across the country in lots of different ways for us we're warm but the solar and the batteries are really struggling when I built the barn I didn't really realize how badly I needed to insulate it I put in a hundred mil insulation which I thought they're batteries they're not people well <laughs> they're quite sensitive and um, they're harder work than the people yeah, we did have a we, <laughs> We did have a, another alarm and I am wondering whether it was the cold that set it off. It's not as frequent as it has been. It's not a case of it gets 50% and it keeps going off. It doesn't keep going off. It's gone off, went off twice one night and it did get down to five degrees and I thought they could suffer a little bit of that. We have a, it set on, our radio set on five degrees. I've had to up that, actually up that through the night to uh, 15 and then I turn it down to 10 because we're using so much power. We've just installed a bottle heater that's like for a greenhouse because that uses a lot less power and I've still got the radiator up there to come on at five degrees but we'll use this bottle heater for the majority of it and see how that goes and then look to get some insulation it's something I need time to do what's really annoying is the fact that <laughs> it's <kind of> pouring <laughs> The really annoying thing is the fact that we had beautiful sunshine yesterday, it got freezing cold last night and we lost a huge amount of power keeping our batteries warm and then we wake up today and we are in freezing fog. So we looked out the window this morning and thought, oh my god, this is going to be a disaster, we're not going to claw back anything today, it's going to be a zero watt PV day, but actually, Surprising, isn't it? surprisingly, okay. it's doing really well. What are we generating now? Okay. We're currently generating about 400, between 400 and 500 watts just to prove we're not making it up. Yeah, which wasn't bad. We were generating over 500 watts a little while ago. I think it's actually moved in a bit more fog has moved in. But having taken those conifers down has made a massive difference on a grey day. On a sunny day, not so much because the sun's pointing directly at it. The more sky they can sort of see, uh, the more glare off the cloud, it's been huge. So today we are, it's another eco flow day. So we're going to run off the eco flow in the house to try and keep our usage down as much as possible and that will give the batteries the best chance they can like previously they're going to have to claw back 10% today don't know if they're going to be able to do that if they can't the generator's going on and you hear that that's the sound of no kids yeah, that's um, why we're together yeah so the reason that we're actually able to appear on screen together today is the fact that the children have gone um, to nanny and granddad's for the day so we have got a ton of jobs to get done yeah. so much to do um, mostly to do with solar mostly to do with getting through this challenge so yeah that's our that's what we're going to be up to So we've given it a few hours and um, it's it's we're not getting enough charging and we're going to have to put the generator on. It's, it's got more foggy hasn't it actually? Yeah it's got more foggy. So we're, we're heating the room for those batteries and um, that's cost us today because uh, it's cold, it's, it's foggy, we're not producing enough uh, solar. So cold was fine, 
cloudy was manageable, but it's cold and cloudy that's finished us. <laughs> All right, let's go turn it back on. So we've had to switch this on a lot quicker than we wanted but at the end of the day we know we're lucky that we're in a position where we have solar power and we're able to keep our bills so low and that we're only depending on the occasional can of fuel rather than the utility companies that other people are depending on. So we're keeping that in mind and we're going to keep positive and make sure we keep the usage down as much as we can. Hopefully as we move away from the solstice things will improve and we won't have to do this too often. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. This is the second winter since we've had our solar power system installed and what we're finding is that in winter it isn't enough really. It, there isn't enough panels. We thought well maybe we could get a second array and actually it's not worth it. It's not worth the money to spend on that because on a bad day you're generating perhaps 200 watts. Spending another five grand on another 20 panels to get a massive 400 watts it's just not it just doesn't cut it even if we get the second hand panels they might not be as good efficient as the ones we've got it isn't enough for our needs and that is just for our needs because there's some people who will boast that they can be on like 500 watts a day that's up to them but we want to live in a modern kind of way we can have the power we've looked at having wind turbine they're expensive for a good one we've got a neighbor that's got one when it's too windy it's switched off and and actually the weeks where we've struggled with the solar have been foggy, still days. Now that is depends on where you live. Some people live in a very windy place where the wind is nearly always blowing. Some people in the world live in much sunnier locations than we do. Where we are near the wash, it's grey. You have grey, still days. You do have very windy days, but when the wind does pick up, it seems to pick up and almost be too much, in which case you need a, probably a really good wind turbine and you know I, I, I don't know if it's worth five or six grand on one for the you know the time it's going to be used because what we're looking at is three months that's all because in the summer we have surplus power when we're off grid we can't put it anywhere you know we could have more batteries but they say well you need more batteries that's the solution not over a thousand pounds in the pocket isn't so what do we do well we're fortunate enough to have a solution because we've got loads of wood we've got loads of wood chip we've got wood chip everywhere from jobs i do this year is the year of the gasifier obviously it's a job that you've got to do it's something you've still got to maintain like anything you've got to have the the wood ready to go for it and it can become labor intensive but actually when i've looked at the gasifiers now and the wood chip situation where they're running it isn't actually that much work it doesn't look like it's going to be as much as a headache as I thought. You still need a generator and the gasifier works on a generator. It's basically you're getting the gas out of the wood and running a generator. There's various things online about how to do that. There's people doing it on YouTube. I've got a book that shows me how to build it. Some of the things I'm going to have to make up along the way. Last week I got hold of three gas bottles to be part of the system that is going to be built. So. I knew I bought the Victron Quattro for a reason, and that reason was for two generators to attach to it. We will have a generator that runs, when it drops below 20%, it will come on, or around 20% it will come on automatically with fuel, and that will hopefully be a rare occurrence. And then the three months of the year, when it's crappy, we will be running on gas. So next year, we're not going to have this problem, hopefully. It's Friday the 30th of December children are in bed asleep, the dogs are snoring if you can hear them and we've just had a look at the VRM and we've really just been talking about how it's gone for December. Obviously we've only got one day left but that's not going to make that much of a difference so we thought that it would be a good time to have a look. Obviously we've had to have the generator on, we've had it on more than once, we've actually had it on eight times during December and Four of those times were in the cold weather when we just had to make sure those batteries were warm enough and had to use the heater to make sure that that was the case. And the other four have been during the Christmas period when we have been a bit lax. 
We've been a bit lax, would you say? Been a bit, we've been a bit more casual. Fraser is here, by the way. He is reading up on his gasification book, so if you can hear the pages frantically turning, that's what's going on there. I'm trying to get some bits ordered, but it's not straightforward, is it? No. No. If we were going out for the day, we had to put it on beforehand to make sure that the batteries were going to have enough charge in them to last the day. There was some really cloudy weather over Christmas. We put it on for the reassurance of knowing that things were going to be okay while we were out visiting family and stuff like that. December last year was significantly worse than this year. It wasn't until we looked back at last December that we realised quite how far we've come and the improvements that we've made. So this month we have generated 156 kilowatt hours of solar and we have consumed 164 which is a deficit of 8 kilowatt hours. Compared to last December that's not so bad. So last year we turned the generator on 22 times during December. We produced 107 kilowatt hours, so nearly 50 fewer than this year, 49 fewer to be exact, and we consumed a whopping 282 kilowatt hours last December compared to the 164 this month. That's even taking into account the fact that last year we were both working four days a week and so the house was empty for some of the days whereas this year I've been on maternity leave and I've been at home pretty much every day or one of us has been at home pretty much every day. So I really think that those small changes that we've been making have really impacted positively. So yes we have used the generator to be absolutely sure that we've got enough in there for the batteries to keep warm so that we don't drop below 10%. And so in that sense I suppose yeah the challenge has been failed. What I would really like now is for our consumption not to exceed what we generate with solar. If we can manage that through the next couple of months then that would be amazing. If we can make up the 8 kilowatt hours that we've lost over this month that would be amazing. If we could break even I would be so happy. So that's the new challenge, that's the new target. Going to look forward to next year as Fraser said, next year is the year of the gasifier. One of the exciting things that's going to be coming up is we're going to be talking more about our land in Scotland. We've had some delays on the sale but we're nearly there now and so we're really excited to be thinking about how that's gonna fit into this off-grid life. If you haven't seen the video about when we went to Scotland to find our woodland, then check out this video here, and a happy new year from us to you.